Hello and welcome to Bit Heroes Radio, the podcast that takes you on a journey through the Bitverse. Joining me today is my amazing co-host, Bitverse Andy. Why don't you say hello, Andy? Hello, world leader, and hello to our listeners. Bit Heroes Radio is a podcast in which we explore the latest updates, tips, tricks, strategies, and behind-the-scenes insights of this exciting online game we know and love. So, whether you're a seasoned Bit Heroes player or just starting out, this podcast is for you. So grab your headphones, sit back, and let's dive in to the world of Bit Heroes together. Today we have an exciting lineup to cover, so get ready to level up your knowledge and skills in game. First up, we'll be discussing recent news, including the new Easter event, the Mythic Materials increased drop rate, followed by a conversation about in-game guilds, what they are, and what we'd love to see added towards them. Then we'll be diving into our Fashion Heroes segment. And then finally, we'll be going through some viewer questions from you amazing listeners. So sit tight and get ready for an action-packed episode of Bit Heroes Radio. First up, let's talk about the new Easter event, aka the Egg Hunt event. This event is going on from April 6th to April 20th. And during the event, we see doubled daily bonuses, we also see the in-game Sardinex shop make a return. And lastly, Easter eggs are hidden around the town and also on Fishing Island. The boosted daily bonuses will definitely be a welcome addition for players looking to level up faster, earn more gold, or some more loot and fams. Coupled with the event shop, players can snag some rare materials, boosts, and also some unique easter theme cosmetics. And the easter theme familiar schematic, Rabbit Blubber. Andy, what do you think about the new familiar? So first off, I will say that I do love the look of Rabbit Blubber. It's a pretty cute familiar, but its usability is a bit limited. You know, it's just an epic fusion familiar, so, but the place where I see it being almost an actual top dog is in tier two camping, where in my opinion, it even outshines Pengs, making it in my opinion, probably top two DPS familiars in tier two. Your thoughts on Rabbit Blubber World? Well, other than what you kind of just covered right now about it being pretty much one of the top contenders in PvP for Tier 2 campers, I kind of don't really like it for anybody else, which is more than 90% of the player base. Um, personally, for those Tier campers, they are excited. They love this new schematic. Trust me, I talk to a bunch of them all the time, and they love it. But for everybody else, it's just a little bit of a letdown. Um, the skill set's not crazy different, and again, it is an epic familiar. I would love to see a legendary or even a mythic. Um, maybe, obviously, the price can go up a little bit for that specific thing, but I just think a legendary would be better because it's just more sought out for a majority of the players. Otherwise, I love the looks. Yeah, totally, and that's completely fair. You know, most of my characters don't fall into the Tier 2 camping category so i'm right with you there now let's move on and talk about the recent five times mythic drop rate events that just ended unfortunately the mythic material drops are some of the rarest and most valuable items in the game so this event was a big deal for everyone looking to gear up their characters during the event that lasted from april 6th until april 13th the drop rate for Mythic Materials was multiplied by five across all game modes. This means that players had much better chances of getting their hands on those elusive drops, and this definitely did change what players were doing, including myself, as I shifted my focus towards grinding for Mythic Materials during the event. World, how was this mini event for you? Honestly, although it was very, very nice to take advantage of it, I really didn't want to do it on my main account. So. I was pretty much playing all of my alternative accounts, including Nub Eater, which is the Let's Play account that I currently use. And I was making sure that they got enough fleece and collars to at least roll or hardcraft amount like once. So I thought it was a pretty good time to work on all my free to play accounts because it was just honestly amazing. It was super easy to get materials and I just love that they give us give us an event like this. I really hope they do something similar to this. Even if it's 2x or 3x, I would love it. This is honestly, it's fantastic. I love the addition to that. Yeah, it, it does sound like some of your alts got definitely boosted. <laughs> I also got plenty of materials myself on all my characters. And I also hope that this was not just like a one-time thing and that we hopefully see this 
or something like this again. You know, one thing I want to note is that this five times mythic drop rate week coupled with the Easter event, you know, being able to pick up the Easter carrots, having the Easter shop, as well as the Easter events, double daily bonuses, in my opinion, made last week one of the, if not the best week ever to grind bit heroes for loot. So moving on to our next topic, in-game guilds. One of the best things about Bit Heroes is that it's a social game. Players join forces to take on dungeons, raids, and bosses, and there's no better way to do this than by joining a guild. So, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about everything related to in-game guilds, from how to join one, the benefits they offer, and what we wish would change. So, the age-old question... How do you find and join a guild? <laughs> well, you spam ask in world chat one, everybody. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, one good resource that you should check out is on the Bitfirst Discord. They have a channel that's called Guild Recruitment BH, which is stands for Guild Recruitment Bit Heroes, which is literally posts with guilds looking for players or players looking for guilds. So I'd recommend you check out some of the posts in there. Or you can make your own post and find a guild that is a good fit for you. And if that doesn't work, <laughs> just do what I said originally and spam World Chat 1. So World Eater, uh, let's say some of our viewers have found a guild that they like, but they don't know what they're looking for. What, what would you say you're looking for in a guild? So personally, I've been in a lot of guilds, and I can tell you right now, Something that I used to look for was what level the guild was. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is a very big mistake that a lot of new players make, including myself, uh, when I had first started. Level does not really matter in a guild. So in my opinion, the most important things to look out for in a guild are one, their perks, two, the carries that they may or may not have. You want to make sure they do have carries. And three, how active the guild is. You really don't want to have a guild that yeah, has a bunch of strong guys, but there's only one or two people online all the time. So in my opinion, what you got to look for in a guild is one to start off the perks. I honestly think perks are extremely important and everyone thinks that level is important. Sadly, it really isn't. I've been in plenty of guilds that are very low level, but they focused all the correct perks that you have to focus. And that to me was way more valuable than what level they were. Another thing would probably be carries. For the carries, I really think you want to try to get something that is up to date. You want to have a very active guild. I really don't recommend going into a guild that has around one to three players active all the time. You want to be able to see like eight plus people active on the usual. That makes for a much more exciting experience, a more fun experience. And to be honest, it just boosts the game so much more if, in your, if you're in a way more active guild. Yeah, totally. I completely agree. You know, although a guild level is a flex and is slightly prestigious when you see guilds and, you know, the hundreds of levels, um, it, at the end of the day, it, it doesn't give any benefit. The perks are what I would say is the bread and butter of joining a guild. Um, perks that you can get from guilds, such as like the increased currencies, like you can get, and I'll just talk about PvP tickets. You can get all the way up to a maximum of 15 instead of the default 10 as well as increasing the regen rate. So let's say you only play once a day. Every time you like wake up and get on, you'll have 15 instead of 10, which is a 50% boost to your daily grind if you're only able to get on once, which is really underrated. And, and pretty much the main thing I look for in a guild is its perks. Lastly, another thing that I will mention is, I guess, the social experience. <clears throat> Definitely is important that there's active players as World suggested. And when I was getting started in the game, I just remember seeing in the guild chat, like during the Halloween event of like 2020 or something, the guild chat was blowing up like, oh, you got to talk to everybody to get all these rewards. And I would have never known that uh, if I didn't learn it from the guild chat. So just sort of social things like that. You know, ask for tips. If there's if there's smart people in the guild, it can really go a long way. All right, now I kind of want to talk about what's missing in guilds. I think there's a lot of things that are missing, and then I kind of want to branch off and go into what we should add in guilds. Um, first off, by talking about what's missing, I do want to point out that you really cannot see any of your guildmates' armory 
without having them on your friends list, which to me is kind of weird. Um, to me, that's just something that's missing. I really think we should be able to see our guildmates armory because it's kind of unfortunate when someone's talking about their build in their armory in my guild chat and I really can't see it unless I unfriend somebody and friend them. And to me, that's just not fair. I feel like I should be able to see them, you know? I know what you mean, world. A lot of people use their guild as almost an extension of their friends list and not being able to see people's armories is just making that friend extension of the friends list a lot worse. I definitely think it's something that should be in the game, being able to see your guildmates armory, especially because you're using those guildmates in things like GVG, where you need to see their builds to make your best team. So I definitely am hopeful that this will be added to the game. One other thing that's missing from guilds is if you go into your guild and you click on the guild event tab, it's almost unused. I really wish there was something going on there, whether it's actually building in some type of guild event or perhaps it's some type of guild quest, really just making use of that tab. I, I remember, you know, I always click on that tab and it's just sort of empty. Yeah, honestly, I, I completely agree with you. Every time I'm in that, in the guild options, I always just see that one option on the very right. And I always wonder, why is that there? It literally says main, members, shop, and then events. And if you click events, it literally is just blank. It always says guild v guild with a dash. So I feel like it is missing. I really do agree with that. Um, and I honestly, I think other than those two things, I don't really think there's anything necessarily missing. But I do have a lot of things I want to add. So to start off, I really think we should add to that events tab. I think we should add something like a guild boss or maybe a guild dungeon. What do you think we should add or, or what? Yeah, I think guild boss would be awesome. I've played some games where guilds will like team up and everybody has a chance to deal damage to a boss. I think that would work really well. Like everybody gets like five turns against the boss. And if your guild does enough damage, you get it down. Everybody gets rewarded. I think that would be an amazing addition. And honestly, as a reward, I would honestly think that there should be something for the whole guild, not just an individual player you're kind of going to be farming for the event for your guild. So I would think a reward, depending on how active your guild was during that guild event, um, would pretty much go out throughout the whole guild, no matter how active you were. That way everyone can benefit. Something like maybe a discount in the guild shop for the week, depending on how high you did. Let's say if you scored the most maximum points, you can get a 10% discount off everything in the guild shop. And if you score at the minimum, you get a 5% or something like that. Whatever they want to put as the numbers. I just think that would be something that would be really, really nice. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like rewards like Mount Guts, Component Cream. Because I know you don't want to give the players too much. So this would be something that you're not going to necessarily give them, but give them an option to have. So to me, it seems balanced and fun. Uh, a fun addition to the Guild Events tab. I also think... Another like reward maybe that guilds could earn is something close to Adgor or Permagor. And maybe it doesn't have to be plus 50%. Maybe it's plus 5% to all, you know, item find, gold find, whatever, whatever. But just something like that would be super unique. And I think a lot of guilds would be super incentivized to grind the new bosses if they were going to get like a week long boost when they when they kill the boss or something. Personally, yeah, I do agree with that, but I would like to see that number maybe tweaked up to around 10 or 15%. I don't think it'd be too game-changing. Um, I think that would be really great. To me, that idea is honestly amazing. And just seeing stuff like this would be awesome. <laughs> you know what, World? I would love to see that percent tweaked up to 500 to 600%. Whoa, Andy, don't go crazy there, okay? <laughs> I think maybe another addition to the guild that isn't necessarily from the events that we just previously talked about adding to that tab uh, would probably be something like instead of having a reward for the guild like a throne maybe add something like guild trophies that way there's more than just thrones that you can get as a reward you also have things like trophies that you can put on the walls or something like that that only your guild would have that way if you're live streaming in your guild or you just want to showcase your guild in a youtube video or just want to show your friends on discord that way they can see all the amazing trophies that your guild has gotten just from participating and placing high in those events 
dude yes guild achievements guild milestones guild awards those would be so sick i just imagine like a guild hall of fame where you just walk down you see trophy cases maybe even they convert the current like contribution list into putting portraits on the wall and the further you go down the list like the top players might have like cooler frames around their portraits showing that they have like contributed millions of xp to the guild yeah and honestly one thing about this game is the more active it is both in guild chat and normal chat or just amongst friends to me the more fun the game is so if you give people more of a reason to communicate in guild and stuff like that the game will feel more alive and honestly so much better and that's kind of getting to my next topic where i kind of want to talk about the members limit right now it's currently at 30 with max perks or i believe 25 with none of the perks bumping up the amount that you can have in your guild i personally think we should have one of two options either move the members up to around 40 ish to 50 ish or this may sound like a little bit of a stretch but adding something like a mother sister guild that you can build within the guild so pretty much you'll have a sister guild of let's let's say i'd say 10 to 20 people i would say maybe around 20 people that is linked to the guild that can still pretty much take advantage of the carries from the mother guild if you're in the sister guild but um still be ranked amongst other sister guilds and regular guilds as their own guild i'm not sure if that's too much of a stretch but one way or another, I think we just need more members to the guild. I think 30 is just a little too low for me. Yeah, this is a complex one because we want to maintain like the competitiveness of top GVG guilds. But also like for me personally, when I'm like live streaming or something, you know, people in the chat are like, hey, can I join your guild? And I'm like, oh, sorry, but we're full. We've been full. We've always been full. There's only 30 spots. So like having something like sister guilds where players would still be able to join top players, you know, not even myself, but actual top players, I think would be really nice because everybody like could benefit from top carries, but not everybody can join those guilds. So it's tough having to say no to just about everybody because there's a member limit at 30. So I definitely agree some type of way to either up that number or have guilds almost be in like an alliance would be really cool um but i do have just a little concerns with being able to balance the top gvg leaderboards and such with that another thing that's kind of bugging me isn't just the member limit but i would say there are some things in the guild shop that to me are just kind of either useless or just feel like a giant waste so at the beginning of the game a lot of players tend to really make honor cloud or honor pin and in my opinion, Honor Cloud is not bad, and Honor Pin has its own place in very few builds, but is actually viable in some situations. But you don't really use it too much after that once you find a better replacement, which honestly is very easy to get uh, just by rolling some chests and getting even an, an epic one would be better. But um, I just think that it's such a shame that you only get one epic material for scrapping something that costs 750,000 guild contribution. To me, that is just insane. That's insane. I think maybe instead of just one epic material, they can add, let's say, the component cream to Honor Cloud. Maybe not an insane amount, but some component cream. We don't have to get the legendary material from it, but being able to get some component cream from it would be nice. That way it can go towards the one accessory that we get or pet afterwards. I just think it's something that should be there that just isn't. Yeah, Honor Cloud and Honor Pin, I got to say they're kind of mid <laughs> as you kind of got to. Um, and yeah, it's almost like, oh my gosh, I, 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 I can't even believe that it's just worth one epic material when you melt it. Because um, other legendaries, when you melt them, you know, you get the legendary material and you get their, you know, component creams or whatever. But this one, it's just, and I get it because you can get a bunch of them a lot easier instead of getting like legendaries from the shop and so on. But yeah, just something more. It definitely seems out of place to just get one epic material from these. Also, just noticing that there's only a guild pet and a guild accessory, I really think there's an opportunity for them to add more things to the guild shop, such as things like guild cosmetics or maybe a guild mount just really more like one-off items that you can buy and 
maybe the cosmetics are exclusive to like certain levels for your guild. Like maybe you have to be guild level 500 and you can get like a golden armor set or something like that. Also, just kind of touching up with that, I also think that would be a really good reward for some of those guild events that we were talking about as additions. Maybe some cosmetics, like some pre-existing cosmetics that are already in game, like how Adgor just gets some cosmetics and just turns them gold. You can add like silver or bronze versions of them. That way they know that they're acquired from the guild. So I think it's an opportunity to pretty much use assets you already have just in a different color and just have a really cool unique look to show off how much you and your guild pushed in events just to earn those um i really do love that idea personally i think another addition to i guess the guild itself that i would have to say would probably be maybe a spot to fish in the guild i really like how you can put a raid shard on the throne spot and you can access raids from your guild if you have it unlocked which is really cool. I know not a lot of guilds have it, but I know some of them do. Um, I really love that part of the guild when it is in the guild. And I think it would be cool to just add a little fishing spot in the guild. Because some people just don't really like to leave guild hall. A lot of people don't like to be bothered or see people running around them. So it would be really nice to have a nice, calm, chill spot to fish with you and your guildies. Yeah, that'd be so peaceful. I imagine loading up, going in the hall, fishing with the homies. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. So World Leader, a little bit earlier, you mentioned how Mount Guts would be a really good drop from something like a guild event or a guild quest. Hey, Andy, what are Mount Guts? Anyways. Well, World, I'm so glad you asked. Mount Guts are required for crafting and upgrading mounts via the smithy. They are also used to re-roll the stat distribution and secondary bonus of mounts, except those bought from the shop. Mount Guts can be obtained from PvP, GVG, Trials, Gauntlet, and Fishing Rewards, also through daily rewards and daily bounties. You can also get Mount Guts from releasing mounts, and lastly, from the fishing shop. Honestly, if they added that as a reward for some of the ideas we had, players would love it. I feel it in my guts. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. Uh, this wiki highlight was brought to you by the Bit Heroes Wiki. Link in the description below. All right, everyone. It's time for one of our flashiest segments on Bit Heroes Radio, Fashion Heroes. This is where we showcase two of the best fashion looks in the game and let you the listeners decide who deserves to be crowned the fashion hero. But before we get to the latest entries, let's take a moment to congratulate last week's winner. Can I get a drum roll, please? Congratulations to Magic. Their outfit was truly a masterpiece. I love the mount they chose, and this look has inspired us all to step up our fashion game. Congratulations again, Magic. Yeah, huge congrats to Magic. What an awesome look. I really do love the funky fresh fro. Definitely deserve the W there. And now it's time to reveal the latest batch of contenders. We've received so many great entries this week, and it was tough to narrow it down to just two. But we've selected the top two looks, and now it's up to you to decide who takes home the title of Fashion Hero this week. First up, we have Hrothi. Here we can see he's rocking the blue sort of movement effects there over the head. He's got a good color scheme, in my opinion, between the blues and yellow slash golds there. Definitely a sick look. Your thoughts, World? Yeah, honestly, I really do like it. I love the pet they have. I currently don't have that pet cosmetic, and I'm very jealous because it just looks so clean and fits so well with the cosmetic choices that they picked today. For sure, I totally agree. And secondly, we have Revy. Revy is looking totally kawaii. We see the pink, we see the hearts. You know, I am falling in love with this look. Honestly, yeah, I really dig the look that Revy has brought to this competition. I personally love that wizard hat that they have on, and I really do think everything they're wearing goes very well together. Very awesome look indeed. Absolutely. So this looks like a good competition this episode. Don't forget to vote for your favorite look in the comments below. 
We can't wait to see who you chose, and if you would like your character to be featured in a future episode, leave your hero's name and guild tag in the comments below, and you just might be chosen to be featured in the next Fashion Heroes competition. All right. Now it's time for some viewer questions, where we answer your burning questions about Bit Heroes. We, of course, love hearing from our listeners, and this is your chance to get your question answered by an expert and a buffoon. It's up to you to decide which is which. Whether you're stuck on a particular quest or just want to know more about the game, we're here to help. So without further ado, let's dive into the first question, which comes from the Grublin. So they state here on their comment, do we re-roll or at what point do we stop re-rolling legendary augments? Same with legendary mounts, re-roll or save for new legendaries. Is it better? to just make new legendaries instead. Well, personally, if you're not in a hurry to get mythics, I say then all you should really do is just reroll them until they become more expensive than crafting, and that's when you decide to scrap it. So you got to consider that you might someday need these certain augments for another build or for another familiar that you get. And maybe at the end of the day, I'm just a goblin who loves to hoard things. But I try to hang on to my legendary augments unless I have multiples of the same type that I don't need. I, although I would reroll at least a few times probably if I am trying to target a specific bonus such as something like damage reduction for Glar's Dose. Our next question comes from Revy who asks, Can you please explain what is the best slash crucial enchantment for each role like tank, healer, bait, and DPS? Honestly, since I mainly focus tank and bait, I can easily say that you would want to go with anything. And by the way, this goes for both tank and bait. You would want to go with anything that is pretty much on your accessory or on the, I guess, the build you're trying to go for. So let's say you have something like um, Demeter's Blessing or Tatooi or otherwise known as Neutrino if you have the legendary version. So Tatooi and Neutrino are going to be block chance. If you are trying to get... Uh, the most benefit of block chance, you're going to want to make sure you're at 100%. So if you can't reach that 100% with your set and your accessory, then you're obviously going to want to put it into your enchants. And um, the same goes for every other enchant. If you want to focus more on deflect with Demeter's Blessing, then you do deflect enchants. So, uh, so on and so forth. But just make sure that you can stack as much of it as possible. You don't want to have a bunch of things like... A lot of low percentages, like low block chance, like 20%, low deflect, like 10%. You don't want to have a bunch of low ones because at the end of the day, you want to make sure you proc something. Yeah, totally. And just to go for healers and DPS, for healers, I would prioritize empower over just about everything. You can really get some juicy heals when you get that empower proc. And for DPS, you can also consider empower. Uh, however, if you're like a multi-hit Andy, you can go for something like dual strike or potentially go for speed. And straight up damage percent is also never a bad idea either. And that brings us to the end of another episode of Bit Heroes Radio. World, what was your favorite moment from today's discussion? Honestly, I really enjoyed digging into the guild additions that we thought of earlier and what it means for other players. I also really did like answering the Grublin's question because I know a lot of people always have that question on their mind. So I really did love those two uh, points in our podcast today. Yeah, I also really enjoyed d digging into the guild additions. And that definitely was a good question from the Grublin. To our listeners, we hope you enjoyed today's episode and picked up some helpful information. Don't forget to subscribe to both of our channels. That's me as bitverse underscore Andy and world as world underscore eater. And please share our podcast with your friends who love Bit Heroes as much as you do. Don't forget to leave a comment with your vote for today's best look in Fashion Heroes. And also leave a comment with a question that you would like to be featured in a future episode. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, good luck with your Bit Heroes grind.